Speaking of hunting, we were almost shot at one point. We being Steven and I, we climbed Mount Peak on our bikes, which is not a bike friendly trail, not at all. It goes like straight up. But of course, us being these reckless little wackos that we were, we were like, hey, we're gonna get to the top and then we're gonna ride down. Wow, that was a mistake. Never doing that again. Uh, actually, I take that back. We did do it again. And I broke my chain and I went over the handlebars. I, you, you know what that moment is called? The uh-oh moment? That's the moment where something so bad is happening, just time is just at a standstill. I recall going over the handlebars as, as my front tire went off this drop and got wedged between two roots. And so I couldn't do anything. I was just going over, but I wasn't going over onto the trail. No, I was going over the handlebars off the trail. That is off the cliff. And I remember going over and going over, rotating in the air. And so now my back was going down and I was facing straight up towards the heavens. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this is so cool. All of time is slow. You know, I bet if I wanted to learn calculus at this moment, I probably could figure it out. That actually occurred to me. It was that slow and that frightening. And, uh, well, I, I landed eventually in some bushes. I thought to myself, I'm gonna get skewered. I'm gonna get like a perforated uh, kidney or something like that. I did not, no, I survived. But back to the story of almost getting shot. We, <laughs> of course, how can I forget? We were going up the back side of Mount Peak, this giant mile high mountain here in Enumclaw. And we were going up the back side, and uh, I was like, hey, Steven, is that a guy up ahead dressed in camouflage? And uh, this guy was kind of sneaking through the woods with, with a bow. And uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, I think so. And we were kind of chatting about him. It's like, hey, I wonder what he's doing. In retrospect, we probably should have been really loud. Like, hey, we're here. Don't shoot us. But we didn't. We were being idiots and whispering instead. Of course, we actually had bright orange uh, jerseys on. So that's okay. But 10 feet away from us, up popped another guy dressed in camouflage. Camouflage now is amazing. So awesome. Now, this isn't just me being a guy, but consider the several facets of blending into the environment. First of all, you need to be uh, still, no movement. Second, you need to be quiet, no sound. Third, you need to be the right color. Fourth, you need to be the right shape. So those are four elements of blending in perfectly to your environment. Those are quite profound, by the way. I learned those from my uncle, cousin, whatchamacallit, he was a Green Beret in Vietnam, and he said that to me once. He said, if you can knock off each of those four elements, be completely uh, still, quiet, have perfect shape and perfect color on you, he said, you can go out, sit on the side of the trail, and uh, listen to two mountain bikers talk about your buddy down the trail. <laughs> and that's exactly what was happening. Really frightening. Uh, by the way, you're not supposed to hunt on Mount Peak. It's it's like a state park sort of area, state forest. <laughs> yeah, so so off they scampered rather quickly when they figured out that, hey, this place is populated. So there are a few tips and tricks on what not to do when you're out in the wilderness on your mountain bike and you see a hunter. And if you are that hunter, how to blend in according to Vietnam.